Good morning, Parkside. It is Friday. It's good to be with you. Typically, Pastor Gary and I record these for Friday, but since I didn't do one on Monday, I've kind of balanced things out, and I'm uh, with you today. I have a passage from 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I've been reading from 2 Corinthians lately as I'm reading through the New Testament. And I came across a few verses in chapter 9. And 2 Corinthians is this really unique book. It has a, a really broad understanding uh, of Paul's own experience in his unique ministry. So he writes to the Corinthian people who were uh, his friends, but he's also had a, a rich history with them. He wrote one other book that we have, and then probably another book as well that we don't have that he mentions in here. And so he has just a really deep friendship with the people in Corinth. And because of that, and that long context of his friendship, uh, he writes about a lot of stuff in here. Uh, some rebuking, uh, some challenging stuff. He talks about how he's been wounded and hurt and really expresses that openly. But one of the, the main things that he is writing about in 2 Corinthians is he's encouraging the people in Corinth to continue giving generously to the church that is in Jerusalem. There's some kind of uh, hardship going on in Jerusalem, and there's different views about what that could be. Uh, but the people in Jerusalem are going through difficulty, and they need like resources. And so part of Paul's ministry has been taking up an offering for them in these different churches. And he's encouraging the people in Corinth to keep giving to the church in Jerusalem, to keep being generous. And he argues that God was generous with us in giving his son. And so it's our proper and fitting response to be generous and give to others. And there's a tendency here to think about only like financial giving, and that's part of this. But I think this is also, as we've talked in the past, this is a kind of uh, virtue formation. This is a type of uh, character trait that Paul is encouraging these people to have, is one of gracious generosity in general. So not just money. Uh, he's talking about money here and taking up an actual offering. But I think he's also talking about becoming people that respond to God's gift of grace in the person of Jesus. And we respond to that with gracious generosity, living lives that are lives that are generous. So this is what he says uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, starting in verse 12. He's specifically talking about continuing to give to Jerusalem. And he says, This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves by giving to Jerusalem, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession in the gospel of Christ, and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. So Paul is saying that the generosity, the actual service of, uh, of giving freely and being generous, uh, that's not just supplying the needs of the people in Jerusalem, but it's also like contagious. Other people are seeing that and are being thankful for what they have and then giving as well. And in verse 13, he says, because of the service by which you proved yourselves, others will praise God. So he's saying that when you are uh, giving generously, when you live lives that are generous in nature, that are gracious, other people will see that and then turn and praise God. Now, I think he's talking about specifically Christians here. Other people, other Christians will see your graciousness, will see your uh, heart of generosity and thankfulness, and they, in turn, will be thankful, and they, in turn, will give. Uh, but I think Jesus also says, in Matthew chapter 5, he says, Let your light shine before men, before all people, so that they may glorify your God in heaven, your Father in heaven. So Jesus is saying, when you live lives according to the gospel, and Paul even says that here, uh, the obedience that accompanies your confession in the gospel of Christ, when you do things that are obedient and virtuous because of the gospel, other people will see that and they will praise. They will glorify your Father in heaven. They will uh, turn and think, hmm, there's something different going on with that person or that community of people. And I want to know what's a part of that. I want to be a part of that. And that will turn into uh, worship of God. 
So I think in this time uh, that we're all a part of, and I'm not asking for you to give more money to the church, that's not my uh, purpose here, but I want us to think about how we can become people that are generous, people that are gracious. Uh, and generosity isn't just money, but it's also being willing to give grace to people, being willing to show kindness and love and mercy to people. That is generous. Uh, giving freely of what you have, uh, even in the way you act towards people. And Paul says that that obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel will bring thanks to God, and it will actually bring other people to praise God. Jesus says the same thing, that they may glorify your Father in heaven. So one of the deepest things that we can do during this time is become people who are gracious and generous. And when we live that way, we are actually becoming a type of witness that doesn't attract attention to ourselves or doesn't attract attention to our points of view or our life experiences, but instead points people to Christ. Takes the attention off of me and says, yeah, I, I'm a generous person and I'm gracious and all that. But the reason is because of the gospel of Christ. And you deflect that attention back to the gospel. And this is the type of thing that we can develop during this time. Becoming faithful witnesses of the gospel. And not just witnessing by our, our, our words, like actually going to people and witnessing, but living a life that is a good witness of the gospel. And that means putting on the character of Christ. Uh, that means living lives that look like the cross. That means giving up our own desires and our own wants for the needs and interests of others, just like Philippians 2. So I, I challenge you today to think of how you can be generous, not just with your resources, although that's a big part of it too, uh, but how you can be generous with grace and with your words and the way you think and act towards others, how you can be uh, generous in showing love and mercy to those around you. Maybe that's just your direct family that you're interacting with all of the time now. It can be easy to kind of uh, hoard your own energy and not be gracious with your family, but really expend yourself, pour out yourself for them. Uh, this could be friends that you have uh, relationships with that you're trying to keep up during this time. This could be just your uh, public presence, maybe even on the internet or uh, in public when you're out and about. How can you be generous and show grace and serve people well during this time? Because becoming people who are Christ-like means being gracious, generous people. And when we do that in obedience to Christ, people will praise God. Uh, so I pray that for you uh, this morning. Remember to join our live stream on Sunday. We'll be with you then. And we'll see you for more daily devotionals next week. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.